Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Mantis Experience. Today, I plan to answer the most common question that I receive about something that we added to our Mantis. So the most common question that I have received about anything that's been done to this Mantis is what kind of fridge do you have? And so that's what I'm going to plan to walk through today. This is not meant to be a comparison video comparing what I have versus the Dometic or the Truma fridge. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube. Uh, my goal for this video is just to show you what I got to help answer that question. And then I'll give a few reasons behind why we got the fridge that we got. So the first question that I want to answer is, why don't we have the standard issue Dometic fridge? Well, when my wife and I bought our Mantis, we made the decision that we thought we did not need a refrigerator at that time. The reason was we had borrowed my cousin's 2018 Mantis with the stand-up, what I call dorm room Dometic fridge, and we never really used it. We always found that we were bringing two coolers with us, uh, and that always seemed to suffice. So that was our plan when we got our own Mantis. So we did not purchase the Dometic fridge that typically comes in the Mantis. After the first couple of trips in our Mantis, we quickly realized that a fridge was an option that we should have pursued and it's something that we really did need. Once we decided that we needed a fridge, we called our friends Ryan and Libby at CB Adventure Supply and started talking to them about the different options and things that they had in their shop here in Fort Worth, Texas. And so we took a, a day trip and went out to CV Adventure Supply and started looking more in depth at uh, some of the different options that were available. After talking with the folks at CV Adventure Supply for a little bit, uh, they pointed us to this Snowmaster CL56D. And that's ultimately what we ended up with. And there's a couple of reasons behind it. One, it was an open box special. It was a demo. So we were able to save a little bit of money on this unit. Uh, the second thing, and again, I didn't really compare all of the different options that are available in this market. There was something in front of me, I had a need, and we sort of went for it. But there are a couple of things that I really do like about it. First thing I really like about the Snowmaster is that uh, it has this case on it. And from what I've read, it's more to be protective, not so much for insulation purposes. But with the way it's designed, I have to feel like it makes a difference from an insulation perspective. So when you're out off the grid, it's gonna help the unit remain colder longer without consuming as much power. The second thing that I really like about the CL56D from Snowmaster is that it fits very nicely in this spot. There was somebody else on one of the Facebook groups who had got the, uh, I believe the CL72 from Snowmaster and it did fit in this same spot but from what I noticed, it was a little taller back here against the window, which seemed like it would make it hard to get to the privacy screen or uh, flipping up to the bug screen or just opening the windows in general. So we liked the general height of the CL56D and the way that it sits inside the Mantis. The third thing that we really like about the Snowmaster is that this is a dual zone fridge freezer combo. Uh, you can see as you open it up, it's got nice uh, containers in here. It's got LED lights on the inside. This side is a little bit smaller, but still could be used to store quite a bit of things. And also you have the versatility to be able to uh, do more what we do, which is fridge fridge combo. And some people might say, well, that doesn't really make sense. When we're going out for three or four days, we really don't have a need to keep things frozen uh, because they'll be consumed before they sort of expire. So for us, it just allows us to have more room maybe food on one side, some drinks on the other, whatever the case may be, it's a little bit versatile and it makes it easier to try and get to the things that you wanna to get to. Along the same lines, like one of the things that's really nice about this is that when you wanna get ready to go fill this up, you can just take this basket out, bring it in your kitchen inside the house and take your goods out of the refrigerator, fill it up and then carry the basket right back here. Because I will say that this unit is pretty heavy and it's not something that you wanna be transporting 
from the mantis back inside the house and back into the mantis. The fourth thing that I would say that I, I didn't really expect to like, but I kind of do like, again, I like flexibility and versatility. This comes with both DC and AC power supplies. So right now we've got it hooked into the 12 volt accessory back here in the Mantis. But if I did need it in a different manner, for instance, I'm having a party at the house or whatever the case may be, I could take this out and plug it into a typical 110 outlet and I'm gonna be able to use this as well. It's not something that we will do very often, but it is available to me in the event that I need it. The next thing that I really like about this, again, not necessarily a necessity, but uh, I like having it, is the Snowmaster comes with a remote. Again, I don't know if the other models do or don't, but there's some nice features about this. One, you have the ability to plug it into a, a mini USB or HDMI, whatever that is, so you can plug it in inside your house. It also has a built-in solar charge on the back of it. Now, I was warned, like, don't put this on your dash in your vehicle and just leave it in there uh, on a really hot day because it could, in fact, melt the uh, remote control. But in the event, you know, while you're driving down the road, you could set this up on the dash and it's going to charge the remote control. There's also some different things that you'll find on the face where it will tell you the temperature of this zone as well as the temperature of this zone, the current draw on the battery, it also has this handy little flashlight so you could reach over in the middle of the night and grab the remote and use this to get around. It's just a simple button on the face of the remote control. It's also got a backlight option so in the middle of the night, again, you could see the different settings that you have, what the temperatures are. Uh, then you can control the fan speed as well as the temperature setting for each zone individually. And there are a couple of other nice little features. Again, I don't know how much I'll use any of these, but the fact that they're there is kind of nice. There might come a day. Uh, for instance, both of these buckles, uh, when you put them down, they've got the ability to be locked. Uh, the case on the side, and I'll get a picture here in a minute, has got a couple of pockets uh, that you can use. It's got some really rugged handles off to the side, and it even came with a bottle opener that you can bolt right into the side of the unit. Um, so again, it's just that flexibility, that versatility to do anything that I needed to do. Lastly, a couple of comments that I would make, you know, anticipating some questions. What kind of draw does it have on power? I really don't have a baseline reference for this. Like, is this uh, more efficient than another model? I don't know. Uh, Ryan and Libby from CB Adventure Supply, this is what they use in their, uh, one of their trailers and they love it. They say it, it really is pretty efficient from a power perspective, so I trust them on that. One of the other nice little features is that you can control uh, when this will cut off based on the voltage of your batteries. You actually have three different options at 10 volts, at 10.7 or 11.8 volts. And when you make that setting, when it detects that you get to that level, the, the unit is actually going to turn itself off to help you save power in your batteries. Another question that I anticipate getting is how long does it take to actually get it to operating temperature? It's surprisingly quick. I bet in about an hour it can go from whatever the ambient temperature is down to around 36 degrees, which is where I typically keep it uh, as a refrigerator. So what we will do, we typically leave this unit off when we're parked at home. Uh, and then when we decide that we're going to go, we'll run out here, go ahead and turn it on, go ahead and grab the baskets inside like I showed you. Bring those inside the house, fill them up. By the time we pretty much get done with all of that, uh, we can bring the baskets out and this is going to be cold enough to keep everything refrigerated while it's still getting to its operating temperature. All in all, I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any questions that I didn't already answer, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to continue the dialogue around our Snowmaster CL56D uh, and answer any other questions that you might have. And also, if you're starting to find these videos helpful about the Taximantis and what we're doing with ours and some of the modifications and upgrades that we're making, please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe. You can even hit the bell so you can be alerted when new videos are posted. I'm trying to do these on a weekly basis. It's not always that feasible, but I'm trying to keep a regular cadence of different videos. And if there's some other questions that you have about the Mantis or something that we've done or something that you would like to see, please feel free to drop that in the comments below as well and I can make a video about that. 
Again, thanks for watching the Mantis Experience. I hope that this video was helpful for you, and uh, we look forward to having more videos down the road.